Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I'm going to be taking this old beat up desk that I got for free as a donation to go towards the young adults that are aging out of foster care. And it was in pretty rough shape. It looked better at first until you start looking closer and there was lots of damage. I thought it was funny the handles were put on upside down. <laughs> And the inside had some water damage and mildew spots that were easily cleaned up with bleach cleaner and some elbow grease. They're not going to go away like completely when you clean it with bleach. You'll still see some staining, but at least you'll know that it's not going to come back and it is clean and you can always paint or put in drawer liners over that. And the drawer gets stuck quite a bit on this piece, so we ended up having to fix that and cover this water damage down here on the bottom. So I'm just going to take the drawers out right now and get ready to make the repairs. Most of the repairs are going to be to the bottom of this piece. I have a feeling it was left outside and got rained on, which caused the damage that it had going on. And it was a knotty pine material. Pine is not the strongest material, but it did have some very thick varnish over the tops, which saved it. I think that it could have been much worse without that varnish. So I'm just going to add some wood scrap pieces that I had in my garage to the bottom to help strengthen the sides there because those sides were cracking just from the expanding and contracting of being wet and then dried out. So I just measured it and then went and cut it in my garage on my miter saw and you're just going to make sure that you align the blade to where you're going to cut it first. You know how they say measure twice, cut once. Well my version of measuring twice is measure, then align the blade, and then cut. I'm going to make a second one so that I can do another piece inside the bottom area there. I have one side that has a crack and the other side has nothing wrong with it, but I just figured if I have the scrap I might as well strengthen both sides so that way the other side doesn't crack later on. Really quickly I would like to talk about who this piece is going to be going to. It is going to a young lady who I donated the couch to. If you haven't seen the couch, I will link it in the cards up above right here. But she loves really bright colors. She likes bright yellow, black and white, and light pink, and like a fiery orange, bright orange color. So I kept that in mind. She sent me a picture for inspiration for this desk off of Pinterest. And I tried my best to recreate it in my own way, of course and I think I nailed it <laughs> and I sent her pictures of it once I was done and she really loved it and it just warmed my heart that I could make something that would make somebody feel special. And on here you just pre-drill the holes before you screw it in. I used one inch screws so that they wouldn't go through and when you do drill them in just make sure that you countersink them down just a little bit. Countersink means that you are sinking the head of the screw into the wood to make it flush to where the screw head doesn't stick out. That way you can use wood filler and fill that in and you would never be the wiser. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on both sides. If you are somebody who is working on your own, you don't have somebody to help you out, then having clamps on hand like this is a lifesaver. It will hold the wood for you so you can work with just yourself. <laughs> get things done all on your own. These kind of clamps you can get from Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, any kind of hardware store that you can think of. Probably on Amazon as well. I'll see if I can link some in my Amazon store down below. And I'm just doing the same exact thing, just measuring it out and cutting it with my miter saw. I actually need to change the blade on this miter saw. I've had the same blade for like many years, <laughs> which is probably really bad. <laughs> On this side, I'm going to be using a one and a quarter inch screw because the uh, piece of wood here on the side of the desk is thicker than it was on the other panel. So that way I can really get that screw deep down in there. And then in the front here, I'm just going to cut a little small piece just to kind of cover up that joint that was there. And then for this piece, I did not get it on camera. I don't know how, but I glued it since it is so small. And then I pre-drilled some holes and I hand hammered in some nails there to hold it in because the screw would have definitely cracked the wood there. And then after that was all done, I just filled in all the major cracks and all of the screw heads that I countersank in. This is what I was trying to explain about countersinking. That way you can fill it in and it won't stick out. 
this wood had so many cracks in it and I was hoping to do like a perfect paint finish on this and I thought that the wood was going to be really smooth and then the more I investigated and wood filled I realized that just wasn't going to happen and I was kind of comparing in my mind it, trying to get a perfect paint finish on this would be like trying to dress up a Sasquatch <laughs> in fancy clothes because there was just no way that this piece was going to be a perfectly smooth finish. The type of wood it was being knotty pine. Knotty pine is just not smooth anyways because of the knots in it. And it had so many cracks and flaws and things in the wood which would have looked fine stained but since she wanted it to be a bright yellow color I had to figure out a way to make it to where that looked intentional and I wanted to bring that up to you guys because sometimes when you're working on a project it's it doesn't end up how you thought it was going to but that doesn't mean that it's ruined all that means is that you kind of have to just think on the fly and figure out a way to make what was going in your head work with what you're doing with your hands and that picture you had in your head you just have to adjust a little bit and figure out a way to make it work and what I came up with while I was working as I was thinking and this piece really stressed me out because I was like oh my gosh this is going to look so bad painted and you're going to see all the flaws but I just decided you know what I'm going to distress it I have seen some other youtubers and instagrammers do yellow paint and distress it and it looked really cool so I was like you know what that's what I'm going to do. That's the answer to my problems. <laughs> when in doubt, distress it. <laughs> it worked out really nicely. You'll see in the end that it really, it looks like it was meant to be that way all along. And I was worrying for nothing. And I'm sure there are so many of you guys that do the same thing. Just worry for no reason. And for dusting this piece off afterwards, I used a hand broom because there was a little bit of spider webs in there. And I wanted to clean that up as I was going. And also it gets all of that dust out of the crevices that my microfiber cloth can't reach. So I do like a combo of a brush and a microfiber cloth before I paint. That way there's no dust in my paint finish. Now it's time to prime. I just used a flat white paint and primer. This was a bear paint. I was testing this out because I had not tried the bear's spray paint. And I usually use Rust-Oleum. And after this experiment, I decided to just stick with Rust-Oleum. The bare paint did fine. It was definitely a good quality paint, but I feel like the Rust-Oleum just covers better. I don't know what it is about Rust-Oleum spray paints that's so amazing or why or I don't know. But they're very affordable and they work really well. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> I'm going to keep on using Rust-Oleum from now on. I think I have a couple of flat black bare spray paints that I'm going to try out still. But look, here's that Rust-Oleum, the two times coverage paint in a flat white and it just works so amazingly. <laughs> I'm going to repeat the same process on the top of the desk. For those of you who are new, you might be thinking, why are you sanding the desk after you already started painting? Well, this is just my method. I have perfected this method over the years. So what I do is I paint the bottom first upside down and then I let it dry and then I flip it right side up and that way when I'm sanding down the top, if any dust gets on the bottom, it won't stick. And now I don't have to tape anything or tape off areas that I don't want to get painted and things like that. Because I just sanded the top anyways. I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> I've done it so many times on my YouTube channel. So you'll see it a bunch of different times on my projects. Especially on projects where I'm doing like a wood finish on top of a painted finish on the bottom. For the drawers here, it was really simple. I just used my little palm sander. The reason I'm using a palm sander is because there was a lot of straight edges in the details that I didn't want to get rounded from my um, orbital sander and it reaches into the little crevices better when I was cleaning out the drawers with the sander. Here is the color. The color is actually called Extreme Yellow and I got a paint sample from Home Depot. This is bare paint. And I poured the paint into my paint gun, then put some warm slash hot water into this little jar and shook it around to get the last little bits of paint because I knew that this desk was going to use every drop of that paint. Then I poured it all into my paint sprayer and just swished it around until it was to the consistency of milk. You want your paint to look like milk, like 
like probably like whole milk or chocolate milk if i had to be specific not fat free milk that'd be a little too watery <laughs> but like a whole milk consistency where it is a, a thicker liquid but not thick like paint out of the can would be that will spray so much more evenly and it will also prevent the paint from drying too quickly to where it creates a rough texture i have learned that over the years and when i paint in the summertime i tend to get that really annoying rough texture that I have to go back and sand and even doing this and watering it down sometimes that can just still happen or you get like a speck of dust in the paint finish that makes it feel like a rough spot or whatever it may be so whenever that does happen you just go back over it like I'm doing right now with a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and just just knock down any roughness so you're not looking to sand off the paint at all you're looking to just take that sandpaper and slide it across the surface so that it takes off any little bits that were sticking up in any way whenever you sprayed your paint spraying is actually really easy guys that is why it's my preferred method so if you have been afraid to try it I highly encourage you to just go for it it's once you practice a few times it becomes very easy and any kind of slip ups that happen are easily fixed and you don't get any brush strokes on the paint which is my favorite part of using this this sprayer because I don't like having brush strokes in my final finish unless it's intentional there's sometimes there's pieces that you want to look rustic or have a texture and that's totally cool but I don't have the patience to, to do all of that it takes to not have brush strokes while using a paintbrush. <laughs> it's hard work. There's one person in particular that can do this really well. Her name is Chris Donna and her channel is called Bella Renovare. And she's probably the queen of not having brush strokes in her finish. You should go check her out if you haven't already. This desk took about three coats of paint and it literally was every single drop of paint that I had in that little tester jar. Now I'm just going to add some details to the side. In the inspiration picture that she sent me, there was all sorts of different black and white patterns on the sides. I decided to just go with one pattern, which was polka dots, and I did white as the background and black polka dots. Once I started getting this color scheme together, this piece was reminding me so much of like a bumblebee type of theme. <laughs> and I just want to mention how I did the polka dots here in case you want to try polka dots in the future. I used a round foam brush and I just put the paint on really good on the end of the foam brush not to the point where it's dripping but it was like very saturated and then I barely just touched it and then started um, like moving it around within its its space that it was already taking up and eventually <laughs> you will see that I try a couple different methods this time I'm just gonna vibrate it back and forth and then fix the spots that aren't covered and then I decide to start twisting it. So I press and then twist and that was the way that worked the best. So if you're wanting to do polka dots, I highly recommend the press and then twist method. It made it to where there was no missing spots of paint and it was a really crisp line around the polka dot. I thought it was so cute and I definitely want to do polka dots again in the future, but maybe I might do polka dots on the outside of a piece of furniture. What do you think of that? Would you like to see a piece that has polka dots painted on the outside of the piece? So like a dresser or a desk that has polka dots all over it. What colors would you choose of polka dots too? That I really would like to know that. I bet you guys come up with some really cool ideas. Now I'm just going to distress, distress, distress this piece like I just showed you on there. Um, I, I went with a heavy grit, I, I think this was like an 80 grit or 120 grit sandpaper so that it would eat through all those layers of paint really quickly and have a more rustic finish to it. It was such an interesting piece how it all came together. Like I was saying, it didn't end up how I had originally envisioned it to and the rusticness of it it goes really well with the shape and, and what it's made of being knotty pine for it to be rustic. But then having it be this like hugely bright gold yellow color is such a juxtaposition on the style of this piece. And it's really cool when that kind of stuff happens because when other people choose your color schemes or give you ideas or when you're doing custom stuff for people, 
you end up doing things that you never thought of doing on your own. And I love when that happens. And this was one of those times. It's just more things that I can add to my toolbox as an artist and just know more about people in general, what people like and how extravagant or how muted things can be for people to make them happy. You can think outside the box and still come up with something that you'd be happy to have in your home, even though it's a little crazy. <laughs> Look at how different it looks now that it's sealed. I'm using hemp seed oil here. This is from Wise Owl. A friend of mine gave me this, and I'm just going to use it on the insides of the drawers to dehydrate the wood again. And then I have this leftover peel and stick gold. Um, I have done this on another piece, but I have not uploaded that to YouTube yet. So I actually used this gold as a like top to a side table and it turned out really really cool I just am waiting to upload that uh, until I can get a couple small pieces together and do like a group of three small pieces so stay tuned for that it was a really interesting piece as well and there was lots of lots of gold involved here it is all finished let me know what you think of this color down below in the comment section and whether or not you liked the polka dots on the sides I'm so happy that I got to do this piece for such a wonderful young lady and we are going to be delivering it to her tomorrow. So I hope she's ready to <laughs> finish up her space in her home and make it feel like a real home for her. I loved the process of this and really going outside my comfort zone. And I just want to say thank you all so much for supporting my channel and allowing me to be able to give back to my community and the people who need it the most. See you next Sunday.